we start with Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin is out there doing the rounds for her book, uh, and she's doing interviews. Uh, she's going to talk to Sean Hannity. She's going to talk to um, Barbara Walters and then Bill O'Reilly. Um, let's start with Barbara Walters because I am and continue to be shocked at her lack of knowledge. I, I can't understand how people can't see this. So let's show this here and then break it up afterwards. Here you go. Let's go to clip number nine. Now let's talk about some issues, the Middle East. The Obama administration does not want Israel to build any more settlements on what they consider Palestinian territory. What is your view on this? I disagree with the Obama administration on that. I believe that um, the Jewish settlements should be allowed to be expanded upon because that population of Israel is, is going to grow. More and more Jewish people will be flocking to Israel in the days and weeks and months ahead. And um, I don't think that the Obama administration has any right to tell um, Israel that, that uh, the Jewish settlements cannot expand. Even if it's Palestinian? Areas. I believe that the Jewish settlement should be allowed to expand. What should the U.S. goal in Afghanistan be? To listen to McChrystal, to listen to the appointee that President Obama asked for the advice from. McChrystal gave the president the advice and said we need essentially a surge strategy in Afghanistan so that we can win in Afghanistan. That means more resources, more troops there. It frustrates me and frightens me and many Americans that President Obama is dithering around with the decision in Afghanistan. With what goal? What should be our ultimate goal? Afghanistan, the people there, the government there should be able to take over and to have a more peaceful existence there for the people who live there without American interference, if you will. Unemployment in the United States is now more than 10 percent, the highest level since 1983. If you were president, what would you do about unemployment? I'd start cutting taxes and allowing our small businesses to keep more of what they're earning more of what they're producing, more of what they own and earn, so that they can start reinvesting in their businesses and expand and hire more people. Not punishing them by forcing health care reform down their throats, by uh, forcing an energy policy down their throats that ultimately will tax them more and cost them more to stay in business. Those are back ass word ways of trying to fix the economy. You do have a way with words. I call it like I see it. Let's talk about Barack Obama. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best, where do you rate him? A 4. There are a lot of decisions being made that I and probably the majority of Americans are not impressed with right now. I think our economy is not being put on the right track because we're straying too far from fundamentally from free enterprise principles that built our country and I question too some of the dithering and um, and uh, hesitation with some of our national security questions that have got to be answered for our country so a four I mean, it scares the Jesus out of me that she has any chance of gaining a national position I mean she was running for vice president she's likely to run for president you can't be serious Maybe the followers of her, they just, they're not up on the issues and they don't really care. And they just think as long as she's, you know, right wing and conservative. So let me break it down for you so you understand the horrible mistakes that were in those answers. First off, oh, there are more Jews going to Israel all the time. So we should put more uh, people in the settlements. Okay, do you understand that if you want peace at all, at least you should address the issue of the Palestinians and the whole Arab world has said, if you expand the settlements, there will be no peace process, there will be no settlement okay, of the uh, situation between Israel and Palestine. She never even addressed that. She made it seem as if like, well, you know, people are going on vacation on Israel, and you know, the people are growing, the population of Israel is growing. So why not? Sure, more settlements. Why not? How about the Palestinians? If you don't care at all about the Palestinians, and if you take her answer at its best, and you think, oh, no, no, she knows exactly what she's saying. She doesn't, does, doesn't give a flying whatever about the Palestinians, just couldn't care less about them, right? But even under that circumstance, don't you care about the peace process so the Israelis can have peace? She just doesn't understand the concept. She doesn't know what's happening in Israel. In a previous interview with Katie Kirk, they asked her, 
you know, what do you think about Hamas? And she went off over to Iran and started talking about them. She has no idea who Hamas is. She has no idea what the peace process is about. It is so frightening that this woman has any chance at all of being president. There's anybody in the country who believes she should be president. God. And then you go over to Af Afghanistan. So she throws out the word that Dick Cheney planted uh, in her mind. She's like, oh, I heard the talking point of dithering. He's dithering. He should just do exactly what McChrystal says. Yeah, that's really great. If you're the president, just follow whatever your general says and don't put any thought into, hey, should we have a non-military component? Even if uh, we win militarily, what do we win? What is our ultimate objective? And Barbara Walters, very smart follow-up question, says, what is the point uh, in Afghanistan? What do you want to accomplish? Oh, you know, I want uh, the government there to work well and have peaceful coexistence without American interference. You just advocated that we put in, McChrystal's position is that we put in 40,000 more troops. We already have 68,000 there, let alone the NATO troops. How is that without American interference? What, what is your objective? Like, how is putting in the 40,000 extra troops going to get you to your objective in Afghanistan? She can't put thoughts together. She's just spewing talking points in random order. How is that not clear to you? I can't believe anybody in the country supports her. 1,500 people showed up today in Grand Rapids for a book signing. You're all excited, like, oh, yeah, yeah, Sarah. All right, then she goes to domestic things. Oh, I know what I would do, and this is a big surprise. I'd cut taxes. It's like it's the only talking point they have on the domestic side. And, you know, her little mind can't understand anything other than cutting taxes, so she says, but Bush cut taxes. And that's what got us into this mess. He cut it, and he cut it, and he cut it, until the economy collapsed. Now, it's a complicated question, and it's, the, the economy didn't collapse just because of the uh, tax cutting, but it certainly didn't help, and it certainly didn't help our revenue, and it certainly didn't help our deficit. And Bruce Bartlett, former Reagan and George H.W. Bush advisor, had an excellent column where he explained that the deficit has gotten larger and larger because of the tax cuts. It's super obvious. And then, of course, in other instances, she's blamed the large deficits on Obama. And her answer is to make them larger through larger tax cuts. And then uh, her, you know, great statesman like, back ass words. Look, Sarah, every single one of your answers was back ass words in your lingo. I believe that's what she said. Look, I don't mind people using profanity. I'm, I'm down. Yeah, the people I use it. I go right, but you got to know what you're talking about, and you can't use words like that if the rest of your statement made no goddamn sense at all. See, look there, I did. Oh, frightening, man! Absolutely frightening. You can't begin to think about voting for this lady. She doesn't know what she's doing. If you like this clip, you'll love the whole show. You can watch that at theyoungturks.com.